Praise the Lord. Thank you very much, Pastor Cyprian. Under the new subnational security, Mr. Blackmore, Raven Blackmore. Mrs. Hillary and the family, relatives, Chief of Police, Acting Mr. Covet, our Chief of Police on vacation, Mr. Carbon, the former Chief of Police, Mr. Blanchard, Mr. Daru, and other gazetted ranks or officers of the police force including former police officers, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Of course, it gives me great, a great privilege to stand here to give a tribute of this event. I consider it an immense privilege having been chosen to do that. It was a hot sunny day on the 15th of August 1983 when I, along with over 30 British recruits, including the National Security Minister then, having freshly taken the oath of office, were transported to the British Training School to commence our initial recruit training course. On arrival at Monroe, we were directed to the police barracks, our new home for the next three months and a half. We were given instructions by instructors Sergeant Asquith Rivier and Corporal Albert King K. Williams, the latter now deceased. As we prepared and sought to adjust ourselves in our new habitat, the loud silence and smooth entry of Station Sergeant Francis Hiller brought instantaneous trepidation and bone shattering chills, particularly in the area of the spine. Although admittedly I was temporarily blinded by his entry, but I was able to have noticed one of the strictest looking men on planet Earth. <laughs> With a thick moustache, bearing piercing eyes, lovely well kempt hair, arrowed with a pointed, menacing bebop, surely beyond reasonable doubt, brought instant paralysis to every part of my body. I know as new police entrants, we were in for it. Why on earth did I leave my mother's home to join the force? Why, my God, why? Remember, Mr. Hiller had not yet said a word to us. What would happen to me if he had opened his mouth to utter a command? When he first addressed us as the chief instructor, although still paralyzed, I was wise enough to know this man, Francis Hiller, was a man of substance and not strong a practical, brilliant senior police officer. It was not easy for us at all because this gentleman, Mr. Hiller, alias Teth, was nothing easy. In my lifetime, I did the most cleaning, what is called fatigue in police terms, at Monroe's. Being punished for mere infractions was common grace. Punishment was the staple diet for any minor infraction and you dare not attempt to question anything. If one ever did so, he would be a candidate for summary dismissal. Who would want to lose their job? You have to learn to take what you get, according to the council. Remember, we were Polish recruits, and as recruits, we had no sin. ASPE believed in excellence and loved the Polish students who delivered quality work punctuated with discipline and class. We happened to survive the training at Monroe's, and I will always say thank you, Jesus. When I sleep in my bed, I still see and hear ASP there after 37 years of service as a police officer now holding the substantive ground of assistant superintendent of police, 37 years later. When we gra graduated, it was a good relief and therapy for the soul. Now, please, the imagery here is just to say how strict, firm, wise, and loving this man was. Of course, he came from the East, and surely he was wise and shrewd. Policemen from generation to come will never stop talking about ASP either. Surely he was one of the best the Dominican police force I've ever seen. 
He was versatile and could be posted to anywhere in Dominica and that the district would become like a land. You did not mess with Francis either. After two years or so having successfully passed my probationary period, I was attached to the Mayo Police Station working with Sergeant Roy, the man in charge then. One afternoon while at the guard desk at the dis as the diarist, I noticed a Mitsubishi Treadmill registration number 81. And who was coming from BC that was the indomitable ASP leader. In fact, he was inspector at the time. Well, by the time I took a scent of him coming, I stood at attention and saluted. <laughs> Remember I told you, is the scent I took. He had not yet arrived at the church office. Just the scent of this great police officer, just the thought of him, warranted a salute. Well, do not ask what was passing inside of my stomach. When that people point at you, it was like a laser beam striking you in the center of your chest. You had to be on your P's and Q's. Anyway, he finally appeared and came up to the church office. My hand was still at the salute position. It was in that position for about three or so minutes. My hand froze in that salute position. He spoke in a Dominican British accent and moved with effortless ease and rhythm like that of the moonwalk of the late Michael Jackson. <laughs> Where is this action? He asked. With several cracks and breaks in, in my voice, I told him Sergeant Lloyd was upstairs. He summoned the sergeant and in my presence he told the sergeant and I quote, I came here to collect Constable Weeks. He's a brilliant constable and I want him at the Criminal Investigations Department. Sergeant Lloyd said, and I quote, but this is one of my best constables at my house, sir. ASP dealer looked at Sergeant Lloyd with an eye which spoke loudly with a menacing stare. That body language could be deemed a reflective of hot volcanic ash and pyroclastic fuel. <laughs> Sergeant Lloyd got the message, and with no further insertions or queries, Mr. Lloyd uh, had to remain mute. I was on my way with ASP Hille, having been officially transferred from the Maho Police Station to the CID. I was gratefully elated and ecstatic as I began a new chapter in my police career. I was officially introduced to Superintendent Simon Daru, who is here today, the man who was in charge of the yard, we call it then, the CID, a detective of great renown and international capacity. I was warmly and graciously welcomed by my, for, and my duties brilliantly outlined to me. Oh, how I felt good to be part of the elite in those days. I became a good detective under the astute leadership and tutelage of Superintendent Simon Daru and ASP Hillier, and supervised by Sergeants Duke Severin, Philsburg Alfred, and Ship Supervisor Corporal Ainsworth Irish. They molded, shaped, and sculpted me into being a fine police officer of great finesse, class, and panache. Wow. ASP Hillier taught me the ropes. He took me everywhere with him. He showed me the criminals and their places of abode. The criminals morbidly feared him. They physically trembled at the CID when they would have just heard the voice of Mr. Hille. Confessions of the crimes to the elite Mr. Hille was given without any prompting, hope of advantage in Tahiria. I told you criminals were gripped with temporary paralysis, especially if ASB Hille had a free five cigarette smoking. When he got vexed, he would take one strong pull or a draw of the cigarette and he would finish one time. It became a moby instantly. <laughs> By this time, it was mass in the place. I mean, we had good times in the yard. Given how close we had become, I realized that I could share my life story with him. Indeed, he was like a father. Of course, I told him about not ever having seen or known of my father. I unashamedly told him of my mom who had been institutionalized at the APU Mental Hospital and how I was deeply immersed and entrenched into the bowels of destitution, abuse, marginalization and neglect. Yes, he even listened intently as I related my story with episodes of pain flavored with emotion. 
the tears came down as I shared my life story with him and he volunteered to visit my mother to see for himself. We got much closer and he looked out for me. He had a good heart and was no hypocrite. He was genuine and honest, worked with impeccable integrity and character. What is your name? Who are you, Glenda Hamster? Are you a Baha'i? Who is your mother? Where do you come from? Who is your father? Where is your cylinder, your soul? soul? Sir, I sent it to a guy in Glenford. <laughs> he then said to him, I caught you see this cylinder. Speak the truth for us, it will explode. <laughs> Baha'u cried, he said, Sir, it don't have gas in it. <laughs> the SP leader said to him, It must explode. And Baham was reduced in crying and trembling. This was just a taste of the volume of salvo of questions in an informal interview with a notorious speaker in the CIA in the late 80s. While doing a, a mobile patrol in the Goodwill area on Silver Bullet, a Toyota uh, Hilux surf that was feared just by the vibration, driven by Corporal Neltra Fountain, Mr. Hilde observed and felt that the vehicle was being driven very quickly. I was at the back of the silver bullet when Mr. Hillen looked in the direction of Fountain. Fountain got a glimpse of, a glimpse of the people and eyes of Mr. Hillen. He slowed down the vehicle to a crawl. Hillen told him, and I thought, don't joke with me. You think you're on a racetrack? I don't think Fountain ever drove him in the manner of it. Once Hillen promised to paint the dark room where photographic exposures were being processed at the CIA in red. The reason was the scenes of crime people were not delivering the goods in a timely manner and was occupied or engaged in other activities. I also remembered when Constable Bill Johnson, now inspector and should be here, was an attachment to the CIA. He had completed investigations into a case of deception slash fraud and the case file was passed on to Mr. Healy for review. Mr. Hillen called Bill Johnson and asked him, what really is your intention? He inquired from Bill, is it your glorious hope to make my eyes defective? <laughs> well, no matter how big and muscular Bill was, the question rocked Bill with fear and trembling. Bill's handwriting was atrocious. <laughs> He invited Bill to the criminal records office where woman Corporal Miriam Williams was located and instructed her to allow Bill to dictate the statements to her while she typed, wrote everything he said as is. In those days, we had typewriters and not computers. Bill did just that, and when he arrived on the word deception, Bill stuttered, that is, baby head of the word, the, 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 the typewriter printed it just as he did. They did, they did, Mr. Hale was stuck in a corner laughing. He had a peculiar smile. There was one time I was driving him to his home at Kenfield. He instructed me to pass along Great Judge Street. I complied. When we arrived by the ice cream parlor at Four Corners, he said he wanted a coconut flavored ice cream. I went out to purchase the said ice cream, but there wasn't any coconut flavor. I went to tell him that. He left the vehicle and joined me. The young lady said, and asked him, can I help you, sir? What flavor of ice cream you want? Mr. Hiller looked and studied the woman and said, and I quote, you asking me what flavor? You don't have any flavor, just give me any color. <laughs> And so many stories that I can go on and on. He left the force as an ASP, but I have no doubt he could have left at a higher rank given what we see in present times. He touched lives and uh, in, in and out of the force. I got very close to his wife and children, and I glanced really here, and the nephew Clinton Hillen, who is now an inspector of police. I always asked about him and his general wealth. I said he'd been very close to me. I told him my life story, particularly coming from the ghetto. Clinton would give me ball by ball updates, and perhaps he said, Uncle would not recognize.
But as a servant of God, I pray for him daily. That's my role as an evangelist. I know what this man meant to me. I and how by the grace of God he crafted me in what I am today in Dominica Police Force. It is by God's grace that I met Mr. Hillier, who instilled sound values, discipline, bravery, fearlessness, diligence, and respect in Tahile into my being. I know he was proud of me. I know he also expected me to be elevated to a higher position. But I'm held back or restrained by the mountains and invisible handcuffs around my wrists. But we leave everything to the Lord who is mighty to save and does everything well in his own time. Hallelujah. I was his protege and for that I am eternally grateful, ladies and gentlemen. He has made a significant contribution here on earth and he ought not to be forgotten, especially by those in the police force. He was a phenomenal human being, and presently I wish the police force had a few men like him as we paddle and build our way into the waters of turbulence and tumultuous society. Surely I will miss him. What a man! What a legend! Good Goodbye, sir, my chief.